Well, Christmas has come early for Alec Murdaugh. Yes, the convicted and disgraced South Carolina attorney has been granted a new judge in his bid for a retrial. It was just announced today. We're going to talk about it. Fitz News is reporting this out of South Carolina. I'm Collier Landry. Let's get into it. Testimony continued today in the most notorious criminal trial. In- when I was 12 years old, my testimony sent my father to prison for murdering my mother. I decided at an early age that our trauma should not be what defines us. It's what we choose to do with it that does. I'm here to share my unique perspective on true crime, mental health, society, and popular culture, albeit with a slight sense of humor. I'm Collier Landry, and welcome to my show. Mover Nation! Welcome back to another impromptu episode of the show. Um, I am back from Ohio, albeit with a nice new floral shirt for y'all. Uh, and I'm slowly getting over the flu, which I came back with from the flight home. Uh, and of course, nothing is, has woken me out of my, uh, out of my catatonic state of the flu. Nothing quite like more Murdaugh madness. And today Fitz news is reporting that, uh, South Carolina, um, that the former chief justice has been tapped to replace judge Clifton Newman in Alec Murdaugh's bid for a retrial. Now <clears throat> this hearing, uh, his, all of this conjecture has been stirred up obviously because of all the Becky Hill stuff of the allegations and of the, um, of the complaints against her, abuse of power, et cetera, et cetera. And I've talked about this before. There's just so much that's going on down there in Colleton County. Who knows what to make of it? But today, Alec Murdaugh has gotten his early Christmas present. And uh, South Carolina Chief Justice Donald Beatty has appointed his predecessor, retired Chief Justice uh, Gene Heifer Toll, I believe I'm pronouncing her name correctly, to oversee convicted killer Alec Murdaugh's high profile bid for a new trial. And this comes out of Fitz News, which is a great uh, independent and unapologetic, as they say, news outlet based out of uh, based out of South Carolina. They do a great job. And uh, hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, Jen DeSemio. It is good to be back. It is good to be Oh yeah. It's good to be back where it's warm and I'm, and I'm glad I'm feeling better because let me tell you for the last several days, I've been feeling like absolute hell, but, uh, I am back and, um, thank you all, uh, for, for tuning in impromptu live today, but I wanted to share this breaking news with you guys because it is, uh, it's pretty interesting. So, uh, in an order that was filed this afternoon today, Tuesday, December 19th, 2023, we got what? 12 more days left in the year. Fabulous. Uh, Beatty granted toll exclusive jurisdiction for the limited purpose of presiding over Murdaugh's motion for a new trial. According to the order, toll will preside over all matters pertaining to the Murdaugh case in quote, including motions to appoint and relieve counsel, a curious reference that could, uh, that could presage could, that could press <laughs> presage another seismic ripple in this ongoing saga. I'm reading this, of course, without glasses, which Friday, by the way, I get my surgery for my eyes for my LASIK. We will see how this goes. I'm very excited. I'm going to share a screenshot of the order again, courtesy of, uh, courtesy of, um, Fitz news. Uh, they're a great outlet. They're doing a lot of really cool stuff. Let's, uh, Let's grab this and share it with y'all. And there we go. This is an exclusive letter. They made this public on their website and I'm sharing it here with you guys. We will add that to the stage. So this is the order that, um, that came down today. Like I said, courtesy of Fitz news and I just had it pulled up and now it's gone. So this reads the Supreme court of South Carolina 
Richard Alexander, the state of uh, state of South Carolina versus Richard Alexander Murdaugh, defendant, Colleton County, and it lists all the cases. Order with the Honorable Clifton Newman presiding. The defendant was convicted of the murders of Margaret Kennedy Brandstetter Murdaugh and Paul Terry Murdaugh on March the second, twenty twenty three, and sentenced on March third, twenty twenty three. On October 27th, 2023, the defendant filed a motion for a new trial. I find that Judge Clifton Newman has requested to be removed from all post-trial matters related to the above reference matters. It is hereby ordered that the Honorable Jean Heffer or Hofer Toll, retired Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of South Carolina, be assigned exclusive jurisdiction for the limited purpose of presiding over the defendant's motion for a new trial in the above matters. Justice Toll shall decide all matters pertaining to these cases, including motions to appoint and relieve counsel, and shall retain jurisdictions over jurisdiction over these cases regardless of where she may be assigned to hold court and may schedule such hearings as may be necessary at any time without regard to whether there is a term of court scheduled. Signed, Donald W. Beatty, Chief Justice of the so- of South Carolina, um, <clears throat> which is wild. They are pulling out the heavy hitters on this one. Uh, because I don't think they want to play around when it comes to Alec Murdoch. I think the legal maneuvering, the legal posturing, uh, has really, um, <laughs> really taken its toll. And now you have this whole scandal with Miss Becky and it is just, uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely just a whole mess. Sarah Lynette says, have you seen the most recent response from Becky's team in regards to the ethics complaint? Uh, I did read a little bit of that. We can get into that as well. Since we're here, we might as well cover that. <laughs> Uh, lawyer, you know, Peter reviewed it. Yes, lawyer, you know. And she almost tries to uh, justify what she did. Yes, and a uh, big shout out to Karen Fan because she's the one that brought this uh, that brought this up to me. But anyways, getting back to this this article. So to continue, uh, the veteran judge will also retain quote return jurisdiction over these cases regardless of where she may be assigned to hold court and may schedule such hearings as may be necessary at any time without regard as to whether there is a form of court scheduled as we said in the uh in a term of court scheduled as i said in the in the reading of the order that includes the scheduling of a highly anticipated evidentiary hearing on the allegations of jury tampering against embattled Colleton County Clerk of Court Becky Hill, whose office managed Murdaugh's six-week murder trial in Walterboro, South Carolina this year. Hill's credibility has come under withering scrutiny in recent weeks as she and her supporters have responded poorly to these allegations, as well as allegations that she violated state ethics law during the trial by leveraging her office for personal gain. Now, I've talked about this in a previous episode, talked about this a lot, um, you know, uh, it does not look good for her. Why did you write a book so quickly? It's just all, all of it. The, the tours that I saw a, a photograph yesterday of a courtroom monitor that was actually outside of the courtroom at the Murdoch trial that showed the courtroom of the trial. So people, this is much like my father's trial. There was a gallery that was in the halls of the court of the courthouse and they had monitors that played the television, you know, television monitors that played what was occurring in the courtroom because there were so many people that could not pack inside the courtroom that uh, they just they just lined the halls of the courthouse because it was a wildly popular trial. I would assume that Alec Murdoch's was just as popular in the small town as well. Um, and it was, you know, and they saw yours truly because I testified for two days. Um, but they, uh, y- you know, uh, having access to the photographs that Miss Becky had in her book, which is she had two different books. And this is responding to your comment. Uh, you know, there was there was like 16 pages of black and white photos, but then there was an extra 24 pages of full color photos. But there is a photo that went out on Facebook that allegedly so- showed Alec Murdoch in his jail cell 
right before his sentencing and he was reading a true crime novel, which her co-author, Miss Becky's co-author, Neil Gordon, pointed out was kind of ironic. And he allowed to go on to social media and everyone is questioning how someone was able, how his wife, who was a photographer who did the photographs for the book, was able to have access to take that photograph. If she did indeed take that photograph, which is still sort of a mystery at this moment. Um, so yeah, very interesting. And uh, yeah, kind of like that. So uh, let's get more into the uh, welcome, Honey Badger, by the way. Welcome, Lucy. Uh, I am still getting over the flu, so I apologize if I'm a little, a uh, little congested, guys. Uh, back to okay, so, um, okay, so the court's appointment of Toll followed the voluntarily that is followed the voluntary recusal of retiring South Carolina Circuit Court Judge Clifton Newman on November sixteenth, twenty twenty three, a move which was first called uh, called for by our founding editor, which is Will, F Will Folks, who is the founding editor of Phil Fitz News. Newman is expected to be a witness in the evidentiary hearing, however, but the language of the order appointing his replacement has many wondering who else may be called as a witness. Now, again, this is from Fitz News. Check them out. Great website. Could lead prosecutor Creighton Waters or other members of his team be on that list? Being called... Uh, as witnesses in this evidentiary hearing for Alec Murdoch's retrial hearing. <laughs> I mean, this is just such a mess. And to see the good work of the prosecutor uh, kind of be dragged into this um, is just, uh, this, this is just, this is such a mess I can't even believe. And I can't even, I, I can't even fathom if this had happened in my own father's trial. <laughs> like, this is just wild to me. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess this is just, this is small town politics. I suppose, you know, I had a lot of experience with this. I actually found out on my trip home to Ohio, I met with, uh, my dear friend, David Messmore, who was the detective who with myself and between myself and him, uh, worked to, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> worked to find the evidence to help find my mother's body. And I, uh, I always just kind of presumed it was he and I, and I say that a lot. It was just me, me and this one detective. And he actually confirmed for me because he goes, you know, you know, Collier, as we were, we were going to get some pizza and he said, you know, Collier, the, you know, prosecutor, he didn't want to, he didn't want to prosecute the case. I was like, what? Um, totally, total aside from this, by the way. But I found out that the prosecutor for my father's case didn't even want to prosecute the case initially. So it really was myself and Dave. <laughs> Who believed, you know, I obviously believed what I knew to be true and Dave believed this, you know, 11 year old kid. So it's, uh, it was wild to hear that, but that was my, that's my own little personal story from going back home. But, um, uh, back to the article. So, uh, could lead prosecutor Creighton Waters or other members of his team be on that list? And why else would the order reference quote motions to appoint and relieve counsel, which is a really interesting point. Could an effort be underway to take Waters and his team off the case? They ask in this uh, in this particular article. So Alec Murdoch was convicted in March of this year after brutally murdering, murdering his wife, 52-year-old Maggie Murdoch, and younger son, 22-year-old Paul Murdoch, Murdoch, at Moselle, the family's 1,700-acre hunting property straddling the Salkahatchee River on the border of Colleton and Hampton counties. Newman, who presided over the trial, sentenced Murdoch to consecutive life terms in prison for those crimes. Murdoch has since filed an appeal which centers on the admissibility of financial crimes evidence at his murder trial, but that process is on hold pending the court's consideration of a motion for a new trial, which is so odd because, yeah, um, which centers on the admissibility of financial crimes evidence, which also if I remember correctly, during the trial when Alec Murdoch testified on his behalf that he did admit to committing these financial crimes, which he just pleaded, pled guilty for and offered this very, uh, in my opinion, very uh, disingenuous apology and grandstanding for saying that he's innocent of murder and teeing up his own retrial, which is what I think is going to happen. Unfortunately, uh, it, it, it's appearing more and more that this is what's going to end up occurring in this particular case, which is just really unfortunate for everyone involved. Um, 
Toll's name has been making its way through the legal community since Newman's recusal as a possible replacement to oversee the ongoing legal drama. But many argued her ties to Murdaugh and his former law firm were too strong. In 1988, Toll became the first woman appointed to serve on the Supreme Court. She was reelected in February of 1996 and was installed as Chief Justice on March 23, 2000 and served in that role until her retirement on December 31st, 2015. Now, the outlet Fitz News has contacted Murdoch's lead attorneys, who are Dick Carpootlian and Jim Griffin, as well as the Office of the South Carolina Attorney General, Alan Wilson, who prose- which prosecuted Murdoch. Neither side was commenting at the time of this article being published. And that was, oh, well, it doesn't say. It was today. It was a, it was a couple hours ago. Maybe three hours ago. So that is the latest. Uh, that is a, an article from Jen Wood, who is uh, one of the Fitz News uh, reporters. Anyways, good work that they're always doing over there. They keep everybody abreast for it. So let's look at who this, uh, who this uh, Jean uh, Heffer, Heffer, I don't know, Heffer Toll is. So she is a retired chief justice, obviously, of the South Carolina Supreme Court. So she, you know, it's interesting because they said, you know, born August 11th, 1943. Wow. So she is 80 years old, 80 years young, we like to say. Uh, I mean, I mean, you would think that she, you know, as, as they said in this article, there are concerns about her connections to murder. I would think that anyone who has been involved in politics or in the court system or judicial system in South Carolina has it has over the years in some way, shape or form had to deal with the Murdoch family in general. Like it would, it, it just makes sense, right? Because they were the seat of power for three generations, four generations, something like that. So the, 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 the father, the grandfather, the great grandfather, all heads, uh, all solicitors in the county in Colleton County. So you would think that uh, anyone who's had any dealings in any of these uh, situations have um, uh, have have had some run in with Alec Murdoch. So you would think that the conflict of interest in all of this reigns supreme, and no one is really safe from any of this and no one, uh, you know, I mean, it it feels like everybody's just going to kind of have to constantly consistently recuse themselves of this for some sort of conflict of interest, right? It's a, you know, it's, it's six degrees of separation with these guys, not even six degrees, two degrees of separation. It feels like, uh, what, just what a, what a mess. And just what a, what a shame for, everyone to have to deal with in the, in the community. But anyways, let's read a little bit about Justice, retired Justice Jean Huffer Toll. So Chief Justice Jean Huffer Toll began her service as an Associate Justice on the Supreme Court of South Carolina on March 17th, 1988, becoming the first woman to serve as a Justice on the South Carolina Supreme Court, which is something 100% to be very proud, proud of. That's a, quite an accomplishment, and uh, that's pretty cool. She was reelected in February of 1996, as we said, and then Chief Justice became Chief Justice on uh, in March of 2000. And for the balance of the term of her predecessor, which expired on June 24th, she was reelected in February of 2004, and then again in February of 2014. She is a first Native Colombian and first Roman Catholic to serve. So she is a first Native. Colombian, which is South Carolina, which I guess is means South Carolina, Colombian. I don't know. First Native Colombian and first Roman Catholic to serve on South Carolina's highest court. I don't know what Native Colombian is. Is 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 is, is she from Colombia? I don't know. But it says uh, oh she, oh she's from Colombia, South Carolina. I'm like Colombia, like Colombia in South America, South America. No, Colombia. South Carolina is where she is from. So she is a native Colombian. Uh, she attended uh, parochial school and public school in Columbia and graduated from Dreyer High School in 1961, where she was recognized as the state's top debater. Chief Justice Toll received her BA degree in philosophy in 1965 from Agnes Scott College, where she served on the Judicial Council, National Supervisory Board of U.S. National Student Association, and played goalie for the field hockey team. 
That's cool. Field hockey. All right. She received her, jury, her JD degree in 1968 from the University of South Carolina School of Law, where she served as managing editor, leading articles editor, and book review editor for the South Carolina Law Review. She is a member of the order of the Coif, Mortarboard, and Phi Beta Kappa. So she is a sorority gal. <laughs> Oh boy. So Chief Justice Pol Toll practiced law for 20 years prior to, election, to her election to the South Carolina Supreme Court. First as an associate with the Haysworth, Hainsworth Law Firm in Greenville, where, and then as an associate and partner in Beiser, Baker, Barwick, Ravenall, Toll, and Bender in Columbia. When she was admitted to the South Carolina bar in 1968, women comp comprised less than 1% of the licensed lawyers in South Carolina. Now almost 20% of South Carolina's lawyers are women. Interesting fact there. Interesting little tidbit. Uh, Merry Christmas, Doreen Lutwick. And New Year's, I hope and pray for you feeling better soon. Oh, thank you so much. I'm feeling better. How, welcome, sunny day. Hello. Uh, yes, Cynthia Ann, she is very, she is very accomplished. Uh, Jack's, Jack's cracks. Jean Toll will be worse on him than any, than the other one. She lives around the corner from where I live. Oh, interesting. So what is, so, uh, Jack's cracks. What is that? <laughs> now I get it. Um, what is, where is it that you live and what is her connection to Alec Murdoch? I'm very curious. Uh, Cynthia, yes. Uh, the, 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 um, the presentation, the, the live was totally impromptu because I got sent this article and I said, let's talk about it. I got to get back in front of the camera because I, I've been sitting, I've literally been sitting in bed for four days. So today was my first day, like actually being out and active. I didn't go to the gym. I haven't been to the gym in like a week since I was in Ohio, but I did like get out and do things. But man, I'll tell you, like, uh, I, I tried to get up yesterday and have a functional day and I was so just zoinked, man, like. I haven't been this sick in six years, but, uh, I, yeah, I, um, I just had to, I had to get up and do something with my day. So here we are. Uh, do I have the photo? I haven't been able to find it. Oh, I'm not seeing what, uh, you guys are having a whole, you guys are always having wonderful conversations and I'm sometimes I'm trying to figure out what are we doing? Uh, you're going to love your new eyes. Oh, Mary Alice Haas. Thank you so much. I would so love that. <laughs> I am so looking forward to it. The bummer is, is that I'm going to have the surgery and then I'm going to be stuck in bed again for like another two or three days. <laughs> like I have the surgery on, on Friday morning and then I'll have to be, I'll have to be, you know, back to sleep. I have this eye shield thing that I got to wear too. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, we'll see. So anyways, so, uh, yeah, I would love to hear more about what you guys think of this, uh, chief justice toll it says in addition to practicing. Okay. So as a lawyer, she appeared on a frequent basis in all levels of trial and appellate courts in South Carolina. She also had considerable experience as a litigator in United States district court, the fourth circuit court of appeals and made one appearance as co-counsel before the United States Supreme court. Her 20 years as a practicing lawyer, including a balance of plaintiff and defense work, criminal trial work, and complex constitutional litigation. She wrote many trial and appellate briefs at all court levels. She also had considerable administrative law experience in litigation involving environmental matters, federal and state procurement, hospital certif certificates of need, employment matters, and election matters. In addition to practicing law, Chief Justice Toll utilized her law degree in public service. Beginning in 1975, she served in the South Carolina House of Representatives representing Richland County, which is where I'm from, Richland County, Ohio, not Richland County, South Carolina, Richland County for 13 years. She was the first woman in South Carolina to chair a standing committee of the House of Representatives. She served as chairman of the House Rules Committee and chairman of the Constitutional Laws Subcommittee of the House Judiciary Committee. There's a lot of committees. She was on a lot of committees, this uh, Chief Justice Toll. <laughs> Her legislative service included four leadership of complex legislation in the fields of constitutional law, utilities, regulation, 
criminal law, structure of local government, budgetary, budgetary matters, structure of the judicial system, banking and finance legislation, corporate law, tort claims, workers' compensation, Freedom of Information Act, and environmental law. I am exhausted just reading through her CV, and we are not even halfway through it. During her 27 years on the Supreme Court, Justice Toll has written opinions addressing the full range of issues, both criminal and civil, which come before her court, which came before her court. Also, she and two of her law clerks have authored a book entitled Appellate Practice in South Carolina. Oh, guys, she's an author, too. Wouldn't you know it? She's written a book. <laughs> Maybe she's going to write another book. Maybe her and Miss Becky don't get together and they'll both write books. I don't know. In addition to her work on the bench, Chief, Chief Justice Toll has become advocate and advocate for has become chief advocate for South Carolina's judicial automation project under her leadership. Technology initiatives are being integrated into the eight levels of the South Carolina court system. Some of the technology project, projects include high-speed network connectivity to all 46 county courthouses and an online statewide case management system. Because of her efforts in promoting technology as a way to create a more efficient court system, Chief Justice Toll was recognized by the government by Government Technology Magazine of one of the of 2002 top 25 doers, dreamers, and drivers of technology and government 21 years ago. <laughs> Things have changed. I'm like, the interconnectivity of courts, I hope, is something that actually exists right now in South Carolina. She's a member of the Richland County, South Carolina, and American Bar Associations, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Uh... There's a lot. She has quite a CV. Chief Justice Toll is married to her law school classmate, William T. Toll of Johnson Toll and, and ba Baliste, Batiste. Sorry, Johnson Toll and Batiste. Chief Justice Toll and Bill were the only husband wife team to serve as editor and managing editor of the South Carolina Law Review. They live in Columbia where they have two daughters uh, who are Yale graduates as well or they're, they actually are Yale graduates themselves. And uh, yeah, so she seems to have quite the CV. The CV. Uh, oh, and she is a devoted, an avid gardener, golfer, and sports fan who maintains a shrine in her den to her beloved Atlanta Braves and South Carolina Gamecocks. There you go. She's a sports fan. We like that. Uh, it will be very interesting to see uh, see how this all plays out. Um, back to Miss Becky Hill. So yesterday, so, uh, somebody brought up that uh, she had a retort. And, uh, oh, thank you so much, Marie Hathaway, for uh, the super sticker. I really appreciate it. I really, really appreciate that. Um, and thank you. Yes, you are welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, Intolerance says, I so enjoyed watching uh, Murdoch squirm at the first trial. Watching it again will be a gift. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of people squirming if there is a retrial. It is, uh, man, it's just really crazy. Uh, yeah, Lucy says, yes, I wore the eye shield when sleeping. And it's a good thing. LASIK surgery and you're awake during the late. Yeah, no, I, I, that's the thing that's freaking me out the most is you're awake and you push, they push on your eyes and you supposedly can't see for a minute for like 30 seconds and something happened. Like it's a lot. It's a little freaky. It's a little freaky, <laughs> but I'm trusting. I am trusting in the process and speaking of trusting in the process and trusting your cybersecurity. Here is a message from today's sponsor aura. They're a show sponsor. Check them out. Hey guys, I want to take a moment to talk to you about something that affects all of us, privacy. In this digital age, our personal information is scattered across the internet, just waiting to be discovered. Now I've spent countless hours trying to protect my privacy, and that's why I'm thrilled to introduce you to today's video sponsor, Aura. Now Aura is not just another identity protection service. It's your all-in-one solution for safeguarding your digital life. They do the heavy lifting by scouring the internet to find and delete your publicly available information. So no more chasing down websites or managing different services or has it all on one secure platform. And here's the real game changer, credit monitoring. Aura goes the extra mile by sending you alerts. You'll receive emails notifying you when someone is poking around for your personal information or when your phone number is being searched. The best part? 
You decide what stays public and what gets deleted. They keep an eye on your credit and ensuring your phone number isn't being handed out to annoying robocallers. We all hate those guys, right? After I signed up for Aura, those unwanted calls drastically decreased for me. Now, I've tried various identity protection and credit monitoring services, but Aura's streamlined platform is what sets it apart. It's user-friendly, customizable, and most importantly, it's secure. They won't sell your information to third parties. and Instead, it's stored in an encrypted vault under your control. Now, here's the exciting part for you guys, my audience. Aura is offering a two-week free trial. Just click the link in my description below or visit Aura.com slash CallYourLandry. Don't wait, guys. Take control of your digital life today. Click the link, sign up for Aura, and enjoy the peace of mind that comes with knowing your information is in safe hands. Let's make those robocalls a thing of the past and keep your identity where it belongs with you. Well, there we go. We got to pay the bills. We got to keep the lights on. Thank you so much to today's sponsor, Aura. They do a fantastic job. I just got an alert today that somebody was trying to do a little bit of shenanigans using my social security number. Dropped into my email. I was like, oh, okay. So check them out. Free 14-day trial. Use the link below, aura.com forward slash call your Landry. Uh, they're a great service. I'm really quite enjoying them. Anyways, now we are moving on to Becky Hill's response and her uh, damage control com- <laughs> campaign, which is not going so well, according to uh, according to many familiar with the situation. Again, this one comes from Fitz News, who is reporting... Her <clears throat> conspiracy, <laughs> uh, I believe she has looped all of this into a conspiracy, but this is what they are saying. This is as of yesterday. The real Becky Hill conspiracy and battle clerk of courts damage control campaign isn't going so well. In battle Colleton County, South Carolina clerk of court, Becky Hill seems to believe a massive conspiracy is underway targeting her in conjun- in connection with with her multiple recent misconduct allegations, not to mention jury tampering allegations that could give the Palmetto State's most notorious convicted killer a new trial, which we were just discussing. According to the clerk, the myriad claims against her aren't merely false. They are deliberate smears intended to impugn her integrity. The reason behind these so-called, these so-called smears taking her down a peg so that Alec Murdaugh, who was found guilty of murdering his wife and younger son nearly 10 months ago following an an internationally televised spectacle, can receive a new trial. Last week, Hill blasted, quote, unfounded, uncorroborated, and unproven misinformation from from a disgruntled former employee, unquote, as the basis for this alleged conspiracy. Meanwhile, Hill and her allies in the media, including two former employees of, of this outlet, which is, uh, which <laughs> is Fitz News, which is where I'm reading this from, as I said, appear to be going to great lengths to prove the existence of this anti-Becky confederation <laughs> and accuse those of us who are reporting on the allegations against Hill as being part of it. As this, quote, Becky was framed narrative takes shape, though, a bigger question is emerging. Are Hill and her allies the ones who are conspiring to cover up the truth? And if so, why? Now, this comes from Fitz News. This was reported yesterday on their outlet. Now, (laughs) anytime people start talking about conspiracies, that's when I start to just kind of... The, 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 you know, the, the, you're driving down the highway, everything's good, you're cruising along, get the radio going, get on cruise control, you're just like, all right, cool, cool, cool. And then all of a sudden, you kind of just start to drift a little bit, and then and, and you hit like the side where the uh, the rumble strips are, and you kind of, kind of, you hit the rumble strips, you got to kind of come back, and then you're, you're still driving, and then you hit the rumble strips again. Like, that's the conspiracy. That to me is like, when you start going there, you start hitting the rumble strips to kind of like wake you up that like, ah, Probably not a conspiracy because here's the facts that would remain that are not a conspiracy. She published a book (laughs) less than six months. Yeah. Less than six months after Alec Murdoch was convicted or right around six months after he was convicted. She had photos that were in that book. that were advertised (laughs) that came out 
that said, if you buy this exclusive copy, you will get 24 full, full color photos and 16 colors. And it was known that she was granting access to people and giving towards like, this is not a secret. This is not a conspiracy. This is not anything. It was known that she was doing this and it is totally believable. It's totally believable because look, when you were, and I know she did her job for a really long time, 20 plus years working for the, for the county and probably did a fa fabulous job. And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to like completely ad ad admonish her, but here's the thing. <laughs> when you, when you're involved in something that is so popular and you become like a celebrity overnight, cause you are the clerk of court on, on one of the most fascinating murder trials and definitely the most gripping murder trial, at least in that in that area of the, of the country or that area of the world, you are most certainly going to become an, like an overnight celebrity <laughs> in a lot of ways. Right? So the, the notion that she uh, abused her power or was giving tours or was giving information or was trying to look like the pizza grosso, as they like to say, like the big cheese, the head honcho, the one who's, you know, uh, making moves and, 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 and the, you know, the celebrity clerk court. That's completely believable. Like, I'm sorry. It is. Those are facts. Like you wrote a book, you put it out. You, you may, you rush this book out. You self published it with this guy, Neil Gordon. You, you gave access to like, these are documented facts. This is not a conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy when there's proof, <laughs> if there's evidence and you like, when you go into a courthouse, you have to sign in and it, like, there, there's proof that she allowed journalists to come in. There's proof that she allowed uh, this, uh, this other journalist. I cannot remember his name off the top of my head. I'm so sure somebody will put it in the, in the notes, <laughs> in the, in the comment section, but she allowed this other journalist to literally come in and promote his book in the hall of the courthouse. Like she did abuse her power. It, 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 it just is. If you are, an employee and you are working and you are not doing employee like things on the time that you are being paid by not only your employer, but by the people that you serve because you are in a public held office, you're, you're not doing your job. <laughs> and it's not a conspiracy. You're not doing your job and, and, and you're using your own position for your own benefit. That's just what it is. So that is not a conspiracy. I'm sorry. That is not a conspiracy. That is not some disgruntled employees. It's, it's a matter of fact. So you can't, you know, <laughs> it's facts over feelings, you know, it, it, you might feel a certain way, but the facts say this, you know, a lot of times we get sidetracked and not to go into a whole other diatribe, but li literally facts always trump feelings, but, but we sometimes, a lot of times, and you can stir this up on Reddit forums, Facebook groups, wherever have you, the Twitter space, the, the X sphere, whatever they call it now, can media can, you know, uh, conjecture on these things. It's all about feelings. Nobody ever listens to facts anymore, but the fact remains is that she did abuse her power and abusing your power is like not doing your job and getting paid for this job and allowing other things. And it's not like, you know, I don't blame her. Like, it's easy to get caught up in this. You're now a big celebrity, a big star. It's a big deal. You have a lot of power. You have a lot of people for you. You have a lot of people, you know, uh, now looking up to you because you're, I, I get it. I know the same thing had to happen with my father's trial. I mean, albeit it was 30 years ago. So there was no Twitter, iPhones, internet, like any of that stuff, you know, um, if it happened later, I guarantee it. I guarantee it because I remember people going to the media and talking and giving their story because they wanted the recognition and they wanted to talk about my mom. And I was my mom's. I remember this fight happening over my mom's friend. No, I was her best friend. No, I was her best friend. No, I was her best friend. And all this, everybody wanted to be the best friend so they could be recognized in the media. The same thing happened. So I, you know, I, 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 like I see why she did it, but don't say it's a conspiracy. Like that's absurd. That is utterly fanciful. It's absurd. Like, don't, don't, don't like chalk it up to the game, man. Like that's just what it is. Like you took advantage of something. You used it for your own benefit. Just own up to it. That's all you got to do. Like just own up to it. Everybody will be fine. We'll all move on. It, it's great. But I'll tell you another, just, you know, another, just, you know, 
anyways. So he says, oh, great. Another legislature litigator. Oh, please click on the subscribe. It's free, but it really helps call your thank you so much. Yes. Elizabeth Joe Collins. Yes. Just click like, click subscribe, please uh, check it out. Click that alert bell. Lots of things coming. This channel is, we are just getting started on this channel. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening here in the new year. Uh, I'm very, very excited for 2024 because uh, YouTube, I'm finding my like mover nation, the family. It's great. It's fabulous. Um, thank you all so much for, for tuning in and sharing and all this type of stuff. Um, but yeah, Becky Hill, absolutely uh, ridiculous. It's not a conspiracy. <laughs> it's not a conspiracy theory when it's true. It's not. So Hill and her defenders have been caught in several demonstrable lives. Oh, here they go. Here, as they have, uh, as they advance her dubious version of events, leading many to question what else they may be lying about. To say nothing of their objective in, sp in, sp in spouting, in spouting such falsehoods in the first place. To recap. So this is, again, Fitz News recapping, doing some good reporting here. To recap, Hill's office oversaw Murdaugh's six-week double murder trial earlier this year, an event that has been referred to as, quote, the trial of the century in the Palmetto State. Murdaugh, 55, a disbarred attorney and confessed fraudster from Hampton, South Carolina, was found guilty on the graphic of the graphic murders, blah, blah, blah. We all know he went to the jurors, deliberated for less than three hours before handing down their verdicts. Hill was the one who announced Murdaugh's guilty verdicts to a waiting world on the evening of March the 2nd, 2023. The following day, South Carolina Circuit Court Judge Clifton Newman handed down a pair of life sentences in the case. Does any of the scandals surrounding Hill make Murdaugh any less guilty of the crimes of which he was convicted back in March? Doubtful. But as her credibility takes a sustained beating based on glaring inconsistencies contained in her responses to investigators, his chances of a new trial are soaring. Again, this is something that she's created that she's created. So to say that she's this is the you know, I'm not trying to like die. Look, look, I am I am not a psychologist, I am not a lawyer, I am just a guy who has been through a lot of shit. That is it. And this is how I view the world. But let me tell you something. I'm not trying to diagnose anybody or anything, but one of the things that they talk about with like narcissists, and, and my father did this. So and he did this post-conviction, by the way. He was started spreading like smear campaigns and they spread smear campaigns. And they say, oh, it's a smear campaign and this, that. They spread misinformation. They gaslight you. They, they you know, gaslighting was trying to conf confuse people with like your version of the truth, right? So saying... For example, in my experience, because I've been in relationships, well, my father, narcissist, <laughs> psychopath, murderer, uh, you know, ga gaslighter, major gaslighter, uh, d they try to basically, uh, you know, tell you that you're you're crazy or you don't remember the truth as it is, right? So, most famously, in my case, I heard my father murder my mother. He tried he he tried to plant in me after the trial and after I testified at trial and he was convicted, he said that uh, that police planted that story in my head and fabricated it and manipulated me when it was me who told the police that story. They didn't come up with that story. I did because I heard it happen. Right. But he used that as a way that's gaslighting. That's saying that your version of the truth. No, you remember it all wrong. This is the truth. And it's not like a benign thing where it's a, Oh no, I, but I remember it this way. Well, no, the, 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 you know, you were wearing the, 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 the Paisley shirt that day. No, I had on a t-shirt. No, it was a button down. No, it's not like that. It's the sky was blue. No, no, no. The sky was orange. The sky was orange and the sea was black. And you're like, no, the ocean is blue and the sky was blue. No, 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 no. And it, it's like, it's just undeniable. That's what gaslighting is. That's appearing to be like a lot of what this, this, situation that Becky Hill and her defenders are, are saying they're, 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 they're like gaslighting everyone as a public. Like, well, you don't remember it accurately. I didn't do this and this and this. And she's and unfortunately, like the most unfortunate thing is, is that this is all leading potentially with this appointment of this new judge today to hear this retrial hearing uh, in place of, of Clifton Newman is there is a potential that Alex Murdoch or Alec Murdoch will get a new trial. Right? So, <laughs> that's the unfortunate thing is her solipsistic nature and the release of this book and just all, 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 all her bad reprehensible behavior as a civil servant is going to lead to a whole other expense for Colleton County, 
a whole retrial, a re-traumatization of the public, uh, you know, and yes, I know that people will come, businesses will profit, street cart vendors will, <laughs> food trucks will make money and things. And that's great for the local economy. But like, really, I think that South Carolina, I think that Colleton County wants to be known for something else other than this stupid murder trial. Really, I think people want to get on with their lives. I honestly do. I know that some people don't. It's been argued. I argued with somebody about this not too long ago on, on another channel. I understand that there are a lot of people that benefit from this, but overall, the collective thing is I think everybody wants to move the fuck on. Excuse my language. They just want to move on. <laughs> really, like, you know, this is not something that people want to be known for. Now she's opened up all these old wounds and, and, and the fact that she's trying to, to say that, you know, she's trying to say, well, I'm the lesser of two evils. Like Alec Murdoch is a convicted murderer. Poor me. Well, no, but you did things that are now leading to reopening this case, potentially him. Maybe there was jury tampering that, that she's been accused. I mean, it's all bad. Why be associated with any of it? Keep your side of the street clean, Becky Hill, and move on. I mean, why give me any fodder to talk about? <laughs> I got better things to talk about. But this is, but I mean, this is fascinating too, because this is like the human, this is the human nature of like what we get into and the solipsistic nature of the me too, and, or not me too, me first, look at me. I, I want to be the one. And I mean, she's re she announced the verdict to the world. She's a celebrity in that world, right? And now it's just led to like just more drama. And then the book and everything, which, you know, the book hasn't, I don't think the book is selling. Uh, it's not busting down Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Amazon's not getting shut down because so many people are trying to buy this book. You know, um, it's a self-published book. Costs like 30, 40 grand. It's an expensive thing. I, I, I would be shocked if she's recouped that money. So it's also like, wh to what end is all of this? Like, what end does this always serve? And I always try to say, you know, in my own personal takeaway, with everything that I've been through in my life is like, when you think about things like this, it's like, to, to what end are we doing this, right? To what end does this serve, right? Does this serve the greater good? Does this serve the, the does this serve to create a, a better narrative uh, to improve people's lives? Does this, or does it serve to your only, is it only self-serving? And, and I think that's sort of what the whole lesson is with this takeaway, with this debacle complete debacle and then to say everybody's making it up and she's a victim of some conspiracy is is it's utterly fanciful it's absurd <laughs> it's, it's absurd uh but hill is currently under investigation so back to her and, and this is the the truth is she's currently under investigation by the south carolina ethics commission in connection with two separate complaints. Now, these are these disgruntled employees that she refers to. One complaint accused Hill of, quote, unethically and potentially unlawfully, unquote, using her office to enrich herself by obtaining and releasing confidential information, some of which later appeared in her book, which is called Behind the Doors of Justice. The second complaint accused Hill of misappropriating public funds from multiple accounts and then allegedly misrepresenting those misappropriations to county officials. So there's like a little bit of money shenanigans too. And there's this, there's this check that has been alleged, like a hundred dollar check that was made out to, she was saying it was to restore the windows of the courthouse and she was collecting money for tours or private tours of the courthouse building and then had someone rewrite that check uh, from Colleton County to her personal bank account for a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. This is the thing that I just never understand. And this is, this is why this has got to be a t-shirt on my store. I always say it, never underestimate the predictability of stupidity. A hundred dollars. If that's true, like she can land in all kinds of hot water, like jail time. Like misappropriations of funds, embezzlement, fraud, like a hundred dollars, like or for a hundred dollars, what are you doing? And maybe let's say it was ten hundred dollar checks. That's a thousand dollars. I know that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to me. You know what I mean? As a guy who makes a show here for for free that works to keep the lights on, I get it. That's a lot. Of, that's still a lot of money. But is that worth like? going out and going to jail, like going to prison for going to jail for dragging your family through this because her son, as I've discussed in past episodes, was also arrested for wiretapping for one charge of, of wiretapping. 
and also sexual misconduct and all kinds of, like he's got his own other this you know her son colt he's got his own other litany of issues surrounding his personal <laughs> threats to his personal freedom as well but that's a whole other story for a whole other day back to the article <laughs> uh both of these cases are expected to be referred to the South Carolina State Law Enforcement Division, which is SLED, as you all have heard that acronym. Uh, oh, thank you so much. $10 super sticker. How did I miss that? Like, wow. Thank you, Elizabeth Joe Collins. Thank you so much. I got to find that. Elizabeth Joe Collins, thank you so much for the super sticker. Your generosity is really, uh, is, is really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy holidays, happy holidays, happy ho I don't know how the song goes, but happy holidays, happy holidays to you. Uh, thank you so much. That was very kind of you. By the way, I will sing Christmas carols for tips. It's like if, it's like if you see like the, you know, I'm on the street corner, you put the money in the little, in the little guitar case. Yeah, we'll <laughs> like to do that one of these days. Do I have the link for the photo of, uh, oh, Sarah Lynette says, do you have a link for the photo of Alex in the sale in this, in the cell that they post on Facebook. I do not. And if anyone has that, send that to me. I I've, I've actually looked for that. I couldn't find it. Um, because I, I guess, I guess I didn't look that hard. Uh, I'm not a dark web person, so maybe I could find it in the, in the, in the bowels of the internet somewhere. But, uh, I just kind of assumed that they probably took it offline because that seems to me the smart thing to do. But again, as I said, never underestimate the predictability of stupidity. So you never know. You never know. It could still be up. It could be on Becky Hill's personal Facebook page for all we know. <laughs> Oy vey. It was Neil Gordon who had said in an interview in the last episode that I played a couple, two, to, two, two weeks ago, uh, that he, he put it up on, uh, he told, um, uh, Vinny Politan on, uh, Core TV that he, he put that one on Facebook on the Facebook group because he approves all the photos. I mean, predictability predictability you can't under i mean it's just and i say that and i and i and i say that comment because i base it off my own father because just his own stupid stupidity and pretty like just all of it people think they can get away with stuff and you can't i was thinking about it today on my drive i drove to the store to get some orange juice today and to my eye drops for my surgery that i'm having on friday and uh <clears throat> i uh i was sitting at the traffic light and we don't have traffic light. I live in uh, Santa Monica. I live close to the coast. Um, and uh, there was traffic light cameras. And I was like, oh, there's no red light cameras. Uh, we Here we don't get red light tickets. Not that I run a lot of red lights because I just don't do that. I try to drive pretty conservatively and pretty I, – I drive like a grandpa. I mean, I drive the speed limit, but, you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not breaking any – because why? Why? Why speed? Why, why run Why run the – I just think it's stupid. Anyways, um – but I, th I thought to myself, I was like, oh, no, that's an intersection camera. There's cameras everywhere. And you think about, like, if you're trying to get away with something, like, oh, no, I wasn't there. They got a camera on the, somebody's ring, ring camera on the door. They got a camera at the red, at the red light, at the stoplight over there. They got the camera down there. At the thing. They got somebody's cell phone here. They got this. They got this. I don't know how people, they track you on the cell phone. I mean, it's just... It's unbelievable. What do you guys think of the shirt, by the way? I'm doing the I, I'm doing the collared shirt instead of the t-shirts. I'm trying to add a little color. I, I went to see one of my best friends in Ohio when I was back home, and uh, <laughs> he comes in. We met at a Buffalo Wild Wings because we want to watch the football game, which was so bright. I felt like I was in a hospital. It was so bright and obnoxious. And I was like, why? Are, like, where is the ambient lighting? Like, where can we get that? You would think I thought in a sports bar it would be dark. This. And he walks in and he goes, of course, you're the guy wearing the bright floral shirt because <laughs> he knows me and we grew up together. He knows that I have a flair for the creative and a flair for the artistic. And he's like, of course, you're doing that. Uh, any wild and crazy bots? Uh, uh, Gen X rating. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I've been admiring this shirt. It looks it is soft. It is very soft. I am I'm happy with my recent shirt purchases though. That's the whole the whole moral of the story is that. <laughs> Anyways. Back to these back to these <laughs> yahoos that I was talking about here. 
Both of these cases, as they said, they referred to SLED, which was already probing allegations that Hill tampered with Murdaugh's jury during his six-week trial in Walterboro, South Carolina, earlier this year. These allegations were raised in early September by Murdaugh attorneys Dick Harputlian and Jim Griffin. And when do they raise these? Right after she released her book. It's not a conspiracy, Becky Hill. It's not. I'm sorry. SLED is also probing allegations that Hill's son, here we go, former Colleton County Information Technology Director Jeffrey Colt Hill wiretapped another county employee at his mother's behest. <laughs> Jeffrey Hill has already been arrested on one count of wiretapping for, quote, having willfully and feloniously intercepted electronic phone communication, unquote. Additional charges against Jeffrey Hill are expected as we, as Fitznews reported last month that Becky Hill's cell phone was subpoenaed in connection with the investigation into her son. Hill's bank records were also subpoenaed in connection with the two ethics investigations. And her work email address is currently being combed by, by both ethics and criminal investigators, they are told. All of these cases could soon be headed to a statewide grand jury as a request for the impanelment of such a star chamber is currently pending before South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson. <sighs> Just what? I mean, I remember when I first became aware of the Murdoch case, which was literally as the trial was ending because I watched a documentary on it on uh, HBO Max. Uh, and... Uh, I was fascinated with it and I thought, oh, okay. Um, wow. This, this family is really, uh, seems to be pretty corrupt. The, the meaning, the Murdoch's right. The history, the, the intergenerational trauma was something I recognized like immediately with the, you know, the, the great grandfather Buster senior who was, you know, found on the railroad tracks and all this stuff. And then, the seat of power and then how they dealt with the railroads and, and a lot of workmen's comp and, and mill mill uh, uh, litigation for workers and things like that. They made a lot of money in a very short amount of time and they held a, a seat of power for a very you know long period of time for well over a century. And uh, I thought like how corrupt, but now I'm just like realizing like everybody, this whole thing. Earlier this month, as details of all the investigations were becoming widely known, Hill appears to have directed a public purge of the website linked to her book. She also signed off on the mudding, uh, on the muting of a Murdoch Facebook page run by run by her business associates that was pre previously used to promote her or promote their book. There you go. So uh, I guess she she signed off on the um, thing. Oh, here is the. Um, Here's the photograph of the courtroom. Uh, the Fitz News says this is the. All right, let's just do this here. Let's see. Hang on. Give me one second, and we will add the share screen. Yeah, there we go. This is the. Uh, this is that that monitor in the courtroom. And uh, as Fitz News rightfully points out here, Fitz News, um, uh, uh, this is the ViewSonic monitor at the front entrance to the courtroom. Clearly not the monitor in the Murdaugh holding cell image published by the wife of Becky Hill's co-author. Anyways, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Oh, here it is. There, uh, here it is, guys. I found it. It's in the Fitz News article. They got, they got everything on this. These guys got everything. This is, this is wild. But this is the uh, monitor of the surveillance image. Okay. This is something. Let me tell you what. <laughs> oh man. I gotta make everything a PDF Murdo holding cell. So this is the uh, this is the file. This is the uh, image. Oh, come on, really? 
Well, it's sideways. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's a sideways image. But uh, yeah, that would be, that is the, the holding cell for Alec Murdoch. Oy vey. Show details. Uh, all right, let's see here. I'm trying to make it. That is, but that is Alec Murdoch in the holding cell. That is, this is all of this, this whole <clears throat> thing that they're saying is privileged info. So what I think is very interesting is that you have the little, you got the monitor behind it showing the courthouse and all. I mean, it's just all, uh, you know, it's all very interesting. Let me, let me re-export this so we can see this properly here. This particular program does not. I got. I got to use these guys. Sorry. Let's try this. Let's see if this one works better. Let's remove. And let's remove. And let's. Let's try this one. Ah, okay. Here we go. This is better. All right. Always something. Okay, here we go. That's the photo. There we are. That is the photo of Alec Murdoch laying there waiting for his thing. So again, uh, and that was, and what is this book that he's reading? Well, they alleged it was a true crime. There's a photo somewhere of my father in his holding cell as well. I'll have to find it one of these days. Uh, I have it somewhere. But there appears to be in the back here, there's like, uh, it's other surveillance cameras in the courthouse. So like, how does someone have access to that? So this is surveillance images, including one of Alex Murdoch, appear on a Samsung monitor hung in the office of the Cal Cal Colleton County Clerk of Court, Becky Hill. So that is, so that is the actual photo from her office now i don't know about you guys but that doesn't look like a conspiracy theory to me does it does it look like a conspiracy theory to you guys because i don't really know i uh i don't really know uh gen x Granny, thank you so much become a member a youtube channel membership and by the way uh channel members we have our live meet and greet the last sunday of every month however the last sunday is new year's eve uh, so you guys have to weigh in. I'll do a post probably tomorrow, or the next day. Uh, if we want to do it on new year's Eve or the day before it's live for Patreon. If you are a Patreon supporter or you are a channel member here on YouTube, I do live members only meet and greets. We get to interact with each other just like we do in the comments, but we get to interact face for face. It's really cool. And mostly you guys talking and sharing your stories. It's quite a lot of fun actually. And uh, we do those every month for channel members and Patreon members. So your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah. And if you're looking for other ways to support the show, of course, please click on our sponsor, uh, of today's episode, aura, aura.com forward slash call your Landry, check them out for a free 14 day trial, two week trial of their services. It's fabulous. Uh, I can't get enough of it. So, um, yeah. So <laughs> riddle me this Batman. If it's a conspiracy theory, how is there a photo in your office? <laughs> Cause I'd imagine like if we zoom in here, I'd imagine that, uh, that those are photos of her. I mean, there's gotta be photos of her family, right? I mean, oh yeah. And then the other thing that is, uh, th that was when you pre-ordered, <laughs> which was advertised on her, uh, on her website as well, adding to this whole conspiracy theory thing. You know, because this is all a conspiracy theory. <laughs> is she's advertising her book, and it says if you pre-order, <laughs> you get the autographed paperback copy. Of course, because why wouldn't you want the autographed paperback copy of Celebrity Becky Hill? But uh, you also, <laughs> you also have, uh, you also get these exclusive photos that I was alluding to. And, uh, yeah, kind of like that. It's a, um, oy vey. Oy vey. what a tangle web 
we weave when we choose to deceive, right? Yeah, I'd imagine that uh, that there is a... <laughs> She's going to have a lot of explaining to do. I mean, she already has, so it's, uh, it's just even worse. It's just so... Such poor form. And, uh, you know, what has it done? It's created a lot of confusion for a lot of people. But here is the... Uh, yeah, here's what her book came with. Her special book. This is what she was advertising on her actual uh, website that was taken down. So according to Fitz News, obviously. Um, Got to make the type a little bit bigger. Sources familiar with the photo's origin say it was snapped from a large screen television located within Hill's office. This claim has been since has since been verified, raising questions as to who really took the photo. It also raises questions as to why Hill would lie about something that could be so easily and categorically disproven to say nothing of why those fancying themselves quote as quote journalists would mindlessly parrot such obvious falsehood again. Never underestimate the predictability of stupidity. Perhaps the reason is that the truth goes directly to one of the claims in the ethics complaint against Hill, namely that she, quote, used her political position and authority to obtain confidential information and digital images of the defendant and others during the trial, which now seems clear that she did. Of interest, Hill previously promoted promoted her paperback book by referencing its inclusion of 16 pages of exclusive black and white photos. She also promoted her deluxe hardcover edition by referencing its inclusion of, quote, 24 pages of exclusive color photos. References to the exclusive images disappeared on July 31st, 2023. However, take a look and here we go. I will share this with y'all. Because this is also very interesting. And there you have it. Here it comes. Autographed paperback copy, only $19.99. Autographed copy, 16 pages of exclusive black and white photos. And then the deluxe hardcover, only $35.99. Autographed copy, minimum of 24 pages of exclusive color photos. Ugh, oy vey. And of course, the entire site has now been yanked offline, replaced by a coming soon masthead. Hill made several other categorical claims in her response that are beginning to crumble under scrutiny. Among them, she insisted she did not personally lead any of the tours of the Colleton County Courthouse, which were conducted during and in the aftermath of the trial. Quote, none of these tours were conducted by Miss Hill, the response asserted. This uh, Fitz News has heard from no fewer than a dozen sources who say Hill personally led them on tours of the courthouse, including several who volunteered to provide images from those tours to the ethics officials. Oy vey. It's all just so bad. Hill's response also categorically claimed that Melissa Gordon was, quote, not once ever allowed any special dispensations by the clerk or her office in covering the trial. Multiple witnesses saw it differently. Quote, she was let in the courthouse before us four times. One attendee at the, at the trial confirmed to Fitz News, which is interesting. She says she was let in the courthouse before uh, us four times. And Neil Gordon, her husband, Melissa Gordon's husband, said in his interview with Vinnie Politan two weeks ago on Court TV that his wife only went to the trial four times. And these people are saying four times they were let in front of her. So it all adds up. Again, <laughs> if you give people enough rope, they will hang themselves. Literally happened in my father's case. Just let them keep talking and they will just, they will just dig their own graves. They'll just, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's wild. <laughs> uh, another source who visited the trial in February confirmed watching Gordon get quote, waved past the line on multiple occasions by bailiffs. Both of those sources indicated a willingness to share what they had witnessed to investigators. 
Hill also categorically denied receiving gifts from other members of the me from members of the media during the trial, a claim which several media outlets covering the trial have reportedly refuted after being contacted by ethics investigators. Additional errors and inconsistencies in Hill's statements have been popping up on social media by the minutes. Again, none of the Hill revelations makes Alec Murdoch any less guilty of the crimes that he's committed. And that's the that is the that is the just the worst thing about all of this is that all of this just complete disregard for the law or disregard for any sort of sense of decorum of the office that she held is only detrimental to the case that was built by prosecutors and is only detrimental to the fact that that you know these <laughs> this now it just tarnishes everything. It tarnishes her legacy. It tarnishes the conviction. It tarn it now opens up a whole can of worms. That's just the, the thing. And then to just have her, you know, chorus of sick offense, just literally say it's all a bunch of utter rubbish is well, rubbish in and of itself. Uh, Mover nation. We get through another one. Uh, I will also be live tomorrow at our usual time, 3 PM Pacific, 6 PM Eastern time. Going to do the naughty list. And uh, I think we got some new additions of this year's naughty list. Might even have a special guest appearance from our good friends up on the North Pole. We shall see. Um, but I want to say thank you so much to all my channel members and channel subscribers and Patreon supporters. Uh, you guys, without uh, your support, uh, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And I wouldn't be able to be here for you guys. Uh, on a on a bi-weekly basis or twice weekly basis yeah whatever that is and uh, create the content that I create a at the very least if you guys could please click the like and subscribe buttons below it really helps with the algorithm it helps promote the show share with your friends if you are enjoying the show if you're enjoying this podcast wherever you uh, may be and however you may be listening or watching thank you for making me a part of your day. I greatly appreciate it. Also, I am an Amazon associate and there is an affiliate link in the show notes of today's episode as well. And in the description box, you can also click that, but please check out our sponsor aura aura.com forward slash call your Landry for your free 14 day trial of their services. Uh, I can't recommend them enough on that note, mover nation. We get through another one. Uh, I'm calling your Landry. This is the call your Landry show. I'll see you on the next one. This podcast is made possible by support from listeners just like you. For exclusive content around this podcast, please consider supporting me via Patreon by going to callyourlandry.com forward slash support. Please subscribe via Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from, and please leave us a five-star review. If you want to see video episodes of this podcast, please check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash callyourlandry. You can find links to additional resources in the show notes of today's episode. This podcast is a production of Don't Touch My Radio. Copyright Collier Landry.